I'm Hug, this is The Dice, and we're going to do something a very little bit different today. I'm going to start doing little mini-episodes on Irish folklore for patrons only. These won't involve the stories that I usually tell in the Irish folklore videos, don't worry, those are going to remain free for everyone always. These are just going to be me talking briefly about specific themes, aspects or characters within Irish folklore. One of my patrons suggested that I make the first video publicly available so that everyone can get a little sample of what the Patreon reward is like. And that was a really good idea, so I'm doing that. There's this attitude in Ireland towards Irish folklore and mythology that says that you have to suck the humour out of it. You have to treat it very dryly and reverentially, talking about it in hushed tones as one would when talking about sacred scripture or gospel texts. It's like what some people do with Shakespeare, except even more stupid. One of the reasons why this approach simply does not work or make sense is the Dagda, a character who completely defies dry and reverential speech. Quick heads up, it is literally impossible to talk about the Dagda without least mentioning his dick. I'm going to try and be brief about it, and it's not going to get graphic, I promise. But if you need a jumping off point, this is it. Cool? Cool. Take Thor, the god of thunder, multiply him by Bacchus, the god of wine, add a sprinkling of the wisdom of Odin and the promiscuity of Zeus, and you get the Dagda. The Dagda is as strong as mountains, with arms like trees and a big fat gut. His cauldron overflows endlessly with whatever food or drink is placed inside it and can only be emptied by being tipped over. With one end of his mighty club, he can spray the bones of his enemies like the frost under a horse's hooves, and with the other, he can restore life and health to the injured or dead. Upon his harp, he can play the three kinds of music that any bard must master. Music for happiness, music for sadness, and music for sleep. The harp can play itself and always comes to its master when called, killing anyone who tries to stop it. The Dagda carries a mighty club with a single eye carved into the tip. It's so heavy that when it was dragging along the ground, it carved the boundary ditch between two counties. The Dagda's club is odd. Sometimes it's just a club, sometimes it's a metaphor for his penis, and sometimes it's... Sometimes it's literally just his penis, and he is... He is beating people to death with his erect penis, and... Yeah. The Dagda has a voracious appetite, but cannot eat endlessly. In one tale, he eats a house-sized cauldron full of porridge, and he has eaten so much food that later when he falls upon his belly, it creates a crater where he landed, and the impact sent all of the porridge spraying from every orifice he had, and, and then he had sex in the puddle. Are you beginning to see why you can't talk about the Dagda 100% seriously? Or are you beginning to get that impression? Dagda stories aren't just slapstick, gross-out humour, sex, and violence, though. The Dagda is something of a trickster, but he's also a dispensary of wisdom. He is nurturing and kind and generous. The name Dagda comes from the words Diag and Dia, meaning good god. Ha! No, this is future hog interrupting past hog. That word would have come from Dago Dewios, which was like a proto-Celtic designation, which would have meant, yes, good or shining, and sky or god. There you go, that's the actual thing. I fucked that up earlier. Thanks. Because he provides for and cares for his people. The overflowing cauldron is a common fertility symbol. 
not just sexual fertility, but also the ability to help things and people grow and to heal. The Dagda represents masculinity, but also represents a very positive kind of masculinity. One that cares for and nurtures others, but also doesn't take itself too seriously. His stories have serious merit. There is a lot to be learned from them. But a lot of that is delivered through their humour. The same can be said for a lot of Irish folklore and mythology. The hushed, reverential tones approach simply doesn't apply. It doesn't fit the original intent of these stories and tales. Okay, this boat has been deadlocked for ages and it's actually starting to annoy me because it's impacting how quickly I can make videos and make more content. So I'm throwing it open to the public. If you're a patron or not, you can vote in this one now. So go to the Patreon, hug and dice on Patreon, scroll down, find this poll and vote on it so I can finally write another script. If only one person votes, and that one person votes for Avartok, I will stab everyone in the universe simultaneously. You have been warned.